probability. It is one of the most intuitive concepts in math. In fact, it may appear that we don't need math. We all have this sense that if we flip a coin, there's a 50% chance head, 50% chance tail. If we take a dice, every number from the six on the faces of the dice has a chance of one six, because there are six numbers, one six, to be on top. So, why do we need math? Well, we need, and especially as we will see when we apply probability to cryptography. It's one thing to ask ourselves what's the chance of uh, one number to appear, but what about what's the chance for either the number six or the number five to appear? So the number six is it? one six chance to appear. Number five, one six. Either one of them would appear on top of the dice. The chance is the add-on of the two probabilities. Maybe intuitive, maybe not. And when we ask ourselves, what if we have two dice? And uh, what's the chance that one of them will show a 6 and the other will show a 5? So, the chance for this to show a 6 is 1 6. The chance for the other to show a 5 is 1 5th. The chance for the combined event six here and five there is the multiplication of this here's V one six. The multiplication is is one to thirty six. That's the chance. So we have the rule of addition and the rule of multiplication. The or and the end. Probability may be quite misleading to the intuition when it comes to issues that are not straightforward. The most famous case is what's called the birthday problem. The question is, there are uh, uh, 40 people in the room. What is the chance the two of them will have the same birthday? Not the year, but the same a date. Intuitively, most people would say, oh, that's very poor, cool, like 10%, 5%, because after all, there are 360 days in the year, and there are, on, there are only 40 people. If you do the math, if you do the calculation, you find out that it's much more than 50%. And it's not difficult to calculate. You could say they are, they are 365 days in the year. Let's get the first person into the room. He occupies one of those days as his birthday. Right? First person, that's his birthday. Now the second person, we ask ourselves, what is the chance that he will not have the same birthday as the first? So he can have one of the 364 days available, except this one. And the chance is 364 to 365. And then we ask the third pay person to come into the room. And we ask ourselves, what is the chance that this third person will not have not the birthday of the first one, and not the, not the birthday of number two. So how many days are left? 363. So you multiply it by 363 to 365. Multiplication, the same way that we have seen with the dice. And you keep going on and enter more and more people. 
until this becomes half, until the chance for not having a birthday in common is 50%, which means that the chance for having a birthday in common is also 50%. And when you do the math, there are 23 people that can walk into the room and reduce the chance to have. Counterintuitive, but that's the math. The other part that is of great interest with respect to probability is the fact that unlike uh, size or weight, which is a property of, of something, probability is not just a matter of what we are measuring, the probability of the matter that we measure, but it is also a matter of who, who is measuring. Is it Bob? Is it Alice? Is it Carla? Who is measuring the probability? What do I mean? If I take one of those dice and put them in one of my feasts and ask you, where is the dice? Now for you, it's 50% chance here, 50% chance there, because you don't know. So that's the probability distribution, 50, 50. But for me, it's 100, 0. Why? Because I know that it's here. I have no doubts. Now what happens if I keep asking this question many people and somebody observes that in 9 out of 10 cases I put the dice in my left hand. That person will not have 50-50 but 90-10 because that person observed the pattern. So the same issue of the probability distribution for the dice in my hands can be 100 to 0 if I'm the one who is holding The dice, it's 50-50, if you are a stranger, never seen me, know nothing, and it is 90-10 if you observe my pattern behavior. So probability is a matter of who is measuring. And the third element of probability of interest is probability changes in response to new information. Let us work out the case. There are three boxes here. I tell you, one of them has a pearl inside. If you uh, discover which of those boxes has the pearl, you get it. Now, it costs you, let's say, $10 to play. But the pearl be worth a thousand dollars. So what do you what do you do? You you have no idea. It's one of those three. The chance that every one of those boxes will have the pearl is the same. They look the same. You have no reason to prefer one on top of the other. So what do you do? You pick one and say, you know what? That's my pick. I think the pearl is here. And if it's here, I'll win it. And then I tell you, here's what I'll do for you. I will open the door here, swing it open, and you will see that this box is empty, no pearl. So the pearl can be either here, where you selected it in the first place, or here. Now I give you a choice. Would you change your mind? Would you point to this one? Or would you stick with your initial intuition? Many people will remain faithful to their original thought. It's a natural inclination. 
But if you do the math, it's absolutely stupid. Because the chance that the pearl is here is one third. The chance that the pearl is here is one third. The chance that the pearl is here is one third before it's open. When it's split closed. So, it is one third that it is here, and together they are two third. This is the addition that it's either here or here. However, now that I know that it's not here, the entire two-third percentage reflects into this box. So the chance that the pearl is here is about 66%, and the chance here, 33%. No-brainer. You switch. Why? Because opening this box gave you new information that you didn't have before. So, probability is tricky. The intuition can uh, mislead you. Casinos make a lot of money out of this aspect. Uh, probability is depends on who is measuring, and probability changes with learning about what's happening. Now, how do we apply this to cryptography? Modern cryptography is based on probability assumptions. When we put a cipher and when we put a protocol to defend our secrets or to confirm identity, what we do, we create a situation that we appraise it to be of low probability for our adversary to compromise our system. It's not absolutes, it's probabilities. We are happy when we say the probability for us to uh, have our secret breached is small enough that we accept it. But remember, probabilities are not absolutes. When you buy a ticket to the lottery, your chances to win the big prize are minuscule. My chances are minuscule. Everybody's chances are minuscule. Also, the chances of whoever ends up winning the big prize were minuscule to begin with. That's what not absolute means. So, the entire battle of modern cryptography might change, but right now that's what it is, is on creating a probability barrier to an adversary, making it highly unlikely for him to achieve his goal and highly likely for us to achieve the goal. Probability is how we measure the level of security that we have. The same way that if you go on a diet, you need the scale to measure how you're doing. When you do cryptography, you need probability to measure how good you are doing. The details 